now there's something called attributes so if you want to save the content of course you can save it whatever you put inside of the save that will be saved into the database uh, and whatever you put inside of the edit function that will actually render in the edit method but if you want to store some data you can store it in form of attributes right so again you can learn more about attributes into my other Gutenberg tutorials I'm gonna jump straight into it I'm gonna say attributes Oops. attributes and we're gonna need some attributes for this so what do we need the first attribute we need is that we need to create an icon uh, which will be like a check mark or a cross now it's better to call uh, those options as do's and don'ts so I'm gonna say option and then you can define the type of this attribute so my attribute is going to be string and then also uh, we can give it a default value so we can give it a default value as do's and the second could be don't when whenever the user changes it the next thing we're going to need is uh, an ability for the user to enter text because currently this all static right you can't change anything I can't double click and change see I, it's not allowing me right so for that there's a component available in WordPress which is called rich text and that's what we're gonna use so where is this rich text available uh, well the rich text will be available to you inside of the block editor package so all I'm gonna do is just import destructure it and say rich text hit enter and you can see that it's automatically picked up that is actually there in the block editor in the previous versions uh, of WordPress it was available in the uh, WordPress slash editor but now it's in the block editor so just be careful with that great since I've got the rich text what are the attributes it can accept right so inside of the attributes you're going to need content right so content again if you want to know more about rich text of course you can search it can show it to you if you want rich text Gutenberg there you go this one so you can see there is an example right here right you have to if you're wondering how did I get this content so this is where you get all of the information from so to begin with I'm going to just copy this content so that it saves my time and yours as well and I'm gonna paste it over here okay so type is string source is HTML selector I would go with h4 I don't want such big heading and then I also want to give it a default value they don't have it but you can you know that you can give a default value and it's better to give to translate it basically and I'm gonna call it do's and then text domain which is Equila by this time you've already been trained you would already been trained by this time this is great okay great so then uh, you can use this component which is rich text so all I have to do uh, instead of uh, because my edit function is going to be long and I would probably be using the use state or use effect uh, I, I like to keep my edit method separate so it doesn't uh, you know it's it's more isolated and I can work peacefully on that so what I'll do is I'll create an edit file edit.js and I'm gonna keep my keep my edit function here right so for now I, all I can do is just say const edit equals class name so we're gonna pull class name from the uh, props so in the props we'll have class name we'll have attributes and then we'll also have set attributes so think of set attributes as set state uh, in react yep uh, okay that's it and then for now let it return nothing for now okay and then export default edit and all I'm gonna do is replace this and colon and put the edit over here like so okay so it's already imported on top which is great and I'd like to use the comma over here to separate it 
and then I can I also need to import the rich text uh, you know over here as well so let's do that so what I'm gonna do is I will create a div with the class of Aquila icon heading and then inside of this div I'm gonna create a span tag with the class of Aquila icon heading and I'm gonna use BEM method, method, methodology heading and inside of this I would probably you know uh, add the icon so we'll come back to the icon so I'm gonna leave it like so okay and then we also use the rich text so I'm gonna use rich text rich text you can see that it's already imported on top which is great and then it's going to need to use some of the parameters so what is available so we have tag name we have class name so we'll use tag name if you remember we decided that we're going to use the h4 instead of h2 so that's what we're going to use so let me ask h4 and then the class name so class name is automatically available in the props by the way this props is available both in edit as well as save uh, one of the things that is not available in save is the set attribute function why because we don't need to uh, you know do any state management in the save uh, we need to set attributes in the edit function okay so I'm gonna use class name so class name is already available which have some default class values I believe and then it's gonna need the value so the value we're gonna pull it from the attribute so we have got this attribute so we're going to pull that from the attribute itself so this attribute is already passed to both edit function as well as save function so you can also pull attributes here so you can say attributes and then you can pull content out of it here as well okay so let's pull content out of it so I'm gonna go over here say const and then pull content out of attributes okay and if you notice it says value is equal to attributes dot content so I can do value equals and then I can just use content over here because I have already pulled content out of attributes so I have to use this okay you also have options like formatting control uh, if you don't want to do use all of the default uh, you know options that rich text provides uh, you can choose what you want to include like if you only want the bold and italic and you don't want the link you can just include that but in our case we're going to use all so we leave that as it is the next thing we're going to do is add an event on rich text so think of this as a form um, so I was listening to Matt's talk and uh, which was for the Gutenberg blocks where he said that everything in the editor is, is just a form which is kind of true because if you go over here if you type something in just a form right so in order to capture what the user is typing we need to add an event on this right this this form element input element so we're going to call a function you can see that you can use an on change so on change is of course a JavaScript function is not pertaining to specifically to Gutenberg or or something it's just JavaScript plain JavaScript and then we're going to call a function inside of it and that function will be set attribute so if you remember it's as good as setting state in react so this is going to update the state of that content so this this content basically that we've actually pulled so it's going to pull the content so and then it's going to pass that inside of this alright of course you can name this something else don't get confused with this content and this content this one and this value is definitely the same but this is different because it's in the context of that input that user is typing so whatever user is typing will be available here and the same will be passed here so when you do the set attributes it's going to update the value of the content alright and then that's what will be used here alright awesome you can also add placeholder so let's do that and then of course I think they forgot to add the text domain and of course you need to import this one as well 
I love it. <laughs> it's automatically pulled that for me. It's nice. Okay, great. So this looks good. Uh, I don't think I need anything else for now. I think this, sh this should work by default. The last thing we want to do is inside of the save method, we no longer want to return the static text. What we really want is we want the value of the rich text, whatever the content user is entered. So the content, it saves whatever value is added over here. So this tag h for whatever value user is going to type inside of it from the editor that value we can save it here so how do we save that instead of returning this static div we can do a rich text dot content okay take a look that's what we need to do see right and what's the tag name we need to make sure that we use the same tag name so that was h4 if you remember this is the selector h4 so think of this as like a target, it's, it's a selector, yep. And what will be the value of it? What will be inside of it? So if you remember, we are passing the content as attributes. So when the user uh, hits on the save button, uh, the update button or publish button, then the save function will be called. So this function will be called. And whatever value is available in the attributes is going to be passed to the save function, right? So in this fashion, the save is going to get this value of the content that user has typed so I can just pass it here like so and then because this content will be dynamic what user has entered it's going to be saved into the database with this h4 and whatever is inside of it yeah I'm going to show you that actually happens I'm going to call it save and I'm going to say content yeah let's go with the content for now Okay, and I also want to show you what's happening in the edit function. So let me console out. Okay, this is edit and this is content. Okay, great. And then we also want to ensure that we have the same markup in the editor that we have in over here as well. So I'm going to use the this one. Uh, okay. Okay, and there's one more correction we need to do. This will actually be an attribute. So it'll be content, content like so. So you know that in ECMAScript you can write, if they both have the same name, the, the property name and the property value are the same, you can put it as content. So this is an object that we are passing, yeah. And now let's see. Okay, so let's add the block, heading with icon. There you go. So currently it has the default value, why? Because in the content attributes, we set the default value as do's, right? Let's change it and see what happens. Can you see that it's moving, right? Delete the whole thing, edit is gone. Imran, you can see Imran Sayyad. You can see it's changing, yeah? So think of edit function as your render method in a React component, right? So it gets called whenever you are calling set state. So think of set attribute as set state. Every time the set state is called, you know the component is re-rendered, correct? So similarly, when set attributes is called, the component is going to get re-rendered. So think of this edit method as your render method, yeah? So when we are calling this method, of course, the attribute value is changing because we are setting it explicitly and that's why the edit has that value and when the user clicks on update like you do it and you click on update you can see that the save method is called and even the save has the same value that has been passed from the edit function to my save attributes value so the attributes will be available both in save as well as the edit and that's how we i can get access to it Let's find out what else there is there in the attributes. So let's find out. Edit attributes. I'm going to refresh it. Take a look. You also have the options, right? So when we are working with the icon later on, probably in the next video, we'd know that we'll be able to actually use this as well and change its value, 
right so you've got the content as well you've got all of that stuff right uh, what do we have in the props that'll be interesting to know right so let's remove that say props and then I'll just say props dot attribute over here for now props 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 dot I just want to see what's there inside of the props yeah let's see so inside of the props um, you can see I have got everything in fact I've got the attributes so aren't these the attributes we registered they are correct so you've got the option and the content which is perfect I've got the class name as well which which is something that we use initially um, if you remember we had pulled out the class name and then we're passing it here right uh, so that's the Gutenberg default class you have the client ID this is pretty useful uh, when you're doing complex stuff uh, the block ID and you also have if it's selected or not merge blocks you have different methods and this is the one that we actually used the set attributes function here so this is the function we actually use the set attribute okay there are other functions on remove uh, you have the toggle selection all that stuff but we are not going to be worrying about that we were just interested in the few of the things which we've already used which is great awesome perfect so that's that in the next video we're going to be uh, learning about how we can add the icon to it and then how we can go ahead and use this block all right so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and do give star to my repository to support my work my repository is aquila and do follow me on github uh, my github handle is imdan all right so i'm going to see you in the next video Till then, thank you very much. Bye.